Hey y'all, uh, my name is Kayla and I am here to share a testimony and um, it's a wife's testimony. I'm a wife, I have been married 18 years and to Juan Baxter, Jawan. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is my testimony and it is a story of, um, yeah, of COVID and when COVID hit my family in uh, my home and a testimony of faith. So I, I know that I have to share it and God has been on me. I need some sleep. <laughs> He's been like, I told you to share this. So um, it is now time to share it. So anyhow, I wanna tell you how things started with my husband and um, and I hope that this story of faith will help to save some lives because there's a lot of people that um, are hurting and have been hurting. So I wanna tell you how this happened. So all this happened within four days. So on Friday, my husband uh, Juan seemed well, he was laughing, he was his energetic self. On Saturday, he was a little tired and was doing some coughing and went to bed early. On Sunday, he was having some trouble breathing and we started using his breathing machine for asthma because sometimes he needs it in the winter um, in these last couple of years. And on Monday, he was extremely tired and slept a lot and we kept using his breathing treatment, but he was not getting better. By Tuesday, um, he barely could get up and I helped him put on his socks and his shoes and was taking him to the hospital. Once he got there, he was diagnosed with COVID and uh, COVID pneumonia. So he had pneumonia and also COVID-19. He was in the hospital for 10 days, praying and fighting for his life. Of course, this was the longest 10 days <laughs> of my life and his life in our family. Um, yeah. So I don't know what other people's stories will be um, and have been. I've, there are a lot of stories of COVID out here and how it's uh, touched people's lives. And I know that everyone does not have the same testimony that I had, but I do know that I'm supposed to share this testimony. So I wanna share with you what I did. I do have some notes because um, God gave me the words. So, um, but I asked him and prayed today that he would give me the words to say to you in the moment. Um, I do a lot of trainings and I use like flashcards. So this is what I'm going to do while I share this with you. So the first thing I did was I prayed to God for wisdom. Now, this was really important because um, during the times of the pandemic, of course, it matters where you go to the hospital, if you go to the hospital, who your nurses and your doctors are, like all of that matters. And I needed to know, of course, yeah, my husband was at home and sick, but like do we need to go to this particular hospital right now? What hospital do we need to go to? Many of them were too crowded to even keep people. So all of that mattered. Um, my mama Pooh and um, our mom, she was praying as well. She had a friend that was in the hospital with COVID and pneumonia. And she let us know that, um, you know, what was going on with him. And as I was praying, she was praying, I was going upstairs to uh, talk with my husband. She called me on the telephone and she's like, you need to take them. By the time I got upstairs, my husband was like, I need to go. I'm like, okay, God, we are going. Um, we went to a hospital here in Philadelphia uh, called Chestnut Hill Hospital and it is near us. And I'm really thankful. I had my babies there. Um, they did a magnificent job. And I'm thankful also, like my prayer was that the doctors, the nurses, that God would guide their hands. He would pick them. All of those things, you know, were really important and that they would see him for the child of God that he was. Like they would see my husband in that way. That was really important. The second thing I did was I prayed and believed God. Like you gotta believe. Um, prayed and believed God. So I was praying and along with that, like God was so kind. He was so kind to give me a vision of me picking up my husband. I saw myself picking up my husband and we rejoiced. So no matter what happened, no matter how hard things got, 
I held on to the fact and this vision that my husband gave me and I believed God, no matter what things look like, even during the times when my husband called and was like, they want to put me on a ventilator. The wonderful thing too was that in my husband's prayers, my husband prayed and God told him to fight for every breath, fight for every breath. So when they said, you know, we're going to have to put you on a ventilator during like day seven or eight, he's like, oh, no, no. God told me to fight for every breath. There's no way to fight for every breath and be on a ventilator. Those two don't go together. So I thank God for that. And I thank him. I also encourage my husband. I'm going all out of order. But <laughs> I have my notes, but it doesn't matter because God is leading me right now to share what I need to share. Um, so like, yeah, like I, I believe God, no matter what things look like when I would talk to people, like here's the next one. I had prayer partners of faith. So like I asked people if they prayed and believed to believe God with me. I didn't talk to anybody that was like, you know what, Kayla, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm sorry that happened to you. And this and then, no, no. Like when I talked to people and they were like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you, child, you ain't got to be sorry. I believe God. I believe God. He gave me this vision. I told everybody my testimony of this vision that God had given me and that I believed him. And if people still were like, woe is me, I was like, you know what? I got to talk to you later, but thank you so much for calling me. And I got off the phone. But for those people that believe God with me and encouraged me, I talked to them. Yeah, the first person I talked to was um, my longtime friend and she happens to be my hairdresser too. Rhonda, Rhonda, you know I love you. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. But I prayed about who to call first. And although I have a lot of people of faith that I could have called, God told me to call her and I knew in calling her that she was not going to talk to me about, oh my God, she wasn't going to you know, do the, I'm sorry or this or that. One thing that God told her that she shared with me was to prepare for him coming home. That was really important. So here's the next one. I prepared for my husband to what? Hey, come home preparing for my husband to come home. So what did that mean to me? That meant that I was, you know, I started straightening up the house, like just for him. Um, I changed, like I bought new pillows in the house. I changed my curtains. These are still the curtains that I have up <laughs> that I got while he was in the hospital. I started ordering things on Amazon and I bought all these things like he's coming home. And I was preparing for him to come home while he was in the hospital with tubes and uh, what is it, the oxygen and all of this. And no matter when I talked to him, I prepared for him to come home. Really, really important. Um, I also protected my peace. Yo, you hear that? Protect your peace. And along with that, if I talked to people who were, you know, upset or, you know, who were upset about what was going on, I still, you know, I sorry, gotta go, gotta get off the phone. I love you. Thank you for calling me. Not to mention I had COVID at the same time and was tired and this and that. But God let me know that I was going to be all right. And my family that was sick at the same time, that we were going to be all right, that my husband's testimony had to be through faith. And that without this faith, that he wasn't going to make it. So that was important. Um, said this time and time again, I believe God. When I would talk to my husband at nighttime and we would talk on the telephone, regardless, you know, when I was in my prayer time with the Lord on my own, when I talked to other people, God gave me this vision that of me picking him up. And I also know what his word said. John, uh, excuse me, James 5, 15. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick man well. What? That was all I needed. I'm a really simple person when it comes to scripture, when it comes to believing. Um, I do my best to have childlike faith. Oh, that's what the word said? Oh, yeah, all right. A prayer offered in faith will make the sick man well. Here we go. We're going to pray in faith. <laughs> and I was praying at nighttime during the day, just all the time. And also repeating those scriptures. Lord, your word said this. And I believe what your word said. Meditated on key scriptures. Yes, that was one of the scriptures. Yes. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. One of my other key scriptures, it was the first scripture I ever knew and committed to memory at 27. Yes, I didn't get saved and accept the Lord as my savior on my own till I was like 27 years old. I didn't grow up in a church, but that's my story. Like I do gospel radio, gospel DJ, all that kind of stuff. And God chose me. That's a whole nother story, a testimony for another time, but we on this testimony right now. The next one, prayed, believed, and spoke God's word, spoke it, read it, kept it, said it, all that. Got to do all these things in faith. Here's one. I thanked God in advance. Lord, I Thank you for my husband coming home. Thank you for the vision you gave me. Thank you for me picking him up all day, all the time. When I got scared, when my husband called me scared, thanked him for bringing him home, thanking him in advance. I always did this, encouraged my husband. I didn't say, baby, why does it have to happen to us? Baby, why does it have to happen to you? Baby, why, Lord, why? Uh-uh. No, there was no time for that. There was no time for even a seed, an inkling of doubt. I encouraged my husband. I let him know what God showed me. I told him about the vision. I told him that he was doing good, that he was fighting, that I believed what God said, ooh, ooh, ooh. that I believed that he could do it. I continued to encourage him. I never told him that I had COVID at home. Why? Because it would have broke his heart and it would have planted a seed of doubt. I didn't tell him that my family had COVID, mm -mm, that our family had COVID. I didn't tell him that because God let me know that this had to be a, this was all in faith. And in order to have faith, you have to believe. And in order for him to believe, the focus had to be on what God said and not what was happening in the world. My scripture again, James 5, 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. That was my prayer. That was my key scripture. I hope and pray that not only this will help someone or a family that is battling with COVID, because as y'all know, it's hard out here. It's hard during this pandemic. But I hope, and what I've learned through this, like just about faith, like to apply all of these things, all these different cards, all the things that I told you about, it can be applied to other things of faith in your life your purpose, your path. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has amazing plans for us, but we have to believe. And I had to get this done so I could move on to the next thing that God has for me, that has for my family. All of this happened in December. And as you know, like I said, it happened in four days. My husband was in the hospital. Um, we wore masks. Uh, we still wear masks. I do have my, um, my vaccine. I'm getting number two uh, next week. Um, but our life and our, our life is in God's hands. We cannot determine the outcome, but we can have faith and we can believe. And I believe what God said. One of my favorite scriptures is Luke 145. She was blessed because she believed God would do just what he said. Um, I love y'all. <laughs> and um, just know that Jesus loves you. You can come to him as you are and he will make you better. For those of you that may be waiting and like, you know, I got to get this together before I come to the Lord. You, you don't have to wait. 
He takes us just as we are and loves us just as we are. And he, he's the one that will make you better. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Again, my name is Kayla Moses Baxter. And, um, yeah, this is the testimony of me and my husband, Jawan Baxter. Um, we're also known as those Baxters. And we're going on 19 years of marriage this year. So, and that is just one of our stories of faith. So I'll talk to y'all soon and love you. And um, yeah, if this blessed you and you want to share it with somebody else because you think it'll bless them too, please do so. Bye-bye.